So, Tim, yes. Einstein believes no. that the baby... Uh, Einstein believes that the baby, that the baby Timothy is still there in, in the four-dimensional space-time, that the older Timothys are all there. We are all frozen pictures a long time. I don't believe this, and you can't deny that there is a huge discrepancy and a huge controversy. There is the public human perception of time and that's where we get into all these paradoxes because of the fact that we humans have our own personal perception of time, which does not necessarily jive with the physicist's interpretation of time. Well, what's confusing is that the evolution of time itself is confusing. It starts with Isaac Newton, who said that time is like an arrow. So one second on the Earth is one second in Jupiter. Einstein gives us a river of time that speeds up and slows down and perhaps even has whirlpools, which would correspond to perhaps black holes. Comes the quantum theory, and the quantum theory is that the river of time can fork, fork into many smaller rivers. And now we have something called string theory, which is what I do for a living. And in string theory, it explains not just time, but all the subatomic particles has nothing but musical notes on a tiny vibrating string. And so time now, we realize, is in some sense an illusion. It's an approximation, it's an average. It's an average of all the quantum possibilities. So when you look, your, when you look at yourself in a mirror, you're not really seeing yourself as you really are. You're looking at a quantum average, average over all possible vibrations, except now, of course, applied to the universe, we now get a multiverse of universes, a bubble bath of universes, such that the collision of two universes gives you a big bang. And that's why we're here today. So time in that sense is an illusion, but if you look at the multiverse, it all fits together. Uh, from listening to Professor Kaku, you may believe that uh, super string theory is now established science, that the multiverse is, exists. I don't think that there is a multiverse, and I don't think that super string theory is going to be the real theory. But Einstein had a friend named Michele Besso, who was a, he helped him with the special and general theory of relativity, and he turned into philosophy, and Einstein was very mad at him. Uh, but then uh, Bessel told him what I'm telling you. There is something about time that relativity theory ignores. Einstein told him, you have to accept the fact that uh, subjective time, which is, with its emphasis on the now, is only an illusion. Then a uh, few years have passed. Sorry, it looked like a few years have passed because Einstein didn't believe that time is passing. And something happened that makes everybody realize that time is passing. Michele Besso's son wrote to Einstein and said, my father passed away. Einstein had only four weeks to live. He, was, he, he had an aneurysm and he knew that he was going to die. He wrote to the son the following letter. Michele has, you remember this letter. Michele has preceded me in living this strange world. This is not important. For us convinced physicists, the distinction between past, present, and future is only an illusion, however persistent. So, Tim, yes. Einstein believes no. that the baby uh, Einstein believes that the baby that the baby Timothy is still there in, in the four-dimensional space-time. That the older Timothys are all there. We are all frozen pictures a long time. I don't believe this, and you can't deny that there is a huge discrepancy and a huge controversy, just like it was be between these two great men. I, I just I need to respond to. Everybody cites this letter that Einstein wrote. He wrote it three, three months before he himself died. Four weeks. Okay, even closer, right at the end of his life. He wrote many popular expositions of relativity. He wrote many scientific expositions of relativity. He never said that. He was writing not a scientific thesis. He was writing a letter of condolence to someone who just lost someone. And he said something very poetic. Never that would say that him, to a morning can, can I please yeah. finish, Absalom? He, he was not claiming that nothing in his scientific presentation or the use of general relativity suggests anything like that, he was being nice. And he wrote it in a little private note that he wouldn't even expect anyone else to read. People, it's a very poetic note, and I thank Einstein for writing it. But the interpretation that this is a deep 
insight of physics. He wasn't doing that. He was just trying to be nice. When people say that time in some sense is an illusion, I think we have to differentiate between human time, human time, which of course is what we measure with our senses, and absolute time, the time of the universe. Hmm. The absolute time of the universe is quantum mechanical. It exists in a multiverse of universes. And of course, with relativity, uh, the whole question of now is, of course, a relative concept. So we have to realize that we are humans talking about the question of now in a human term. Well, as a physicist, we look at the absolute framework where now is a relative concept and it exists in a multiverse of universes. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is our human senses are an average. We average over the multiverse, otherwise we couldn't survive. We cannot survive in hyperspace if all of a sudden we're hit with all these four dimensional tigers coming at us. No, we have to have an average and that's why we can exist we can exist in a four-dimensional quantum mechanical world of the multiverse because we average over all these phenomena. Otherwise, we go berserk. Can, can I just, again, uh, and this actually started when Professor Kaku said, Einstein said time is like an arrow. He doesn't say that. But Einstein did believe in absolute simultaneity. Let me just explain this one thing. Einstein believed, if I snap my fingers, that was an event, and there is a objective physical fact about what was happening on the moon at that moment, what was happening on Alpha Centauri at that moment, what was happening as far away as you like. That's absolute simultaneity. It says that all of these events, there is a unique way to organize them into these all happen, then these all happen, then these all happen. Newton's very clear that he believes that. Special and general relativity, if you take them at face value, get rid of that. They just don't believe there's such a thing. That's absolutely correct. That has nothing to do with the flow or time or direction of time. And in special and general relativity, you replace that with what's called the proper time. We, there's a proper time where we are as we sit here. There's a proper time in all the things in our minds. And there, are, there is a future and a past. For this event, it has an absolute future and absolute past. All of those things still exist. Getting rid of absolute simultaneity is a tweak of not much interest for everyday life. It's an interesting theoretical thing to do. I actually think you have to put it back in, but that's another story. Um, but to, to, you don't want to, whatever you want to do, you want to separate the question, is there absolute simultaneity, to is there a difference between past and future? Does time, do things change? Again, it, it sounds a little strange to say the entire universe is made up of vibrating strings, but there's no time, because to vibrate, time has to be going on, right? Vibration is emotion. <laughs> So it, it seems a little odd to say at base there are things that are vibrating, but after all, time isn't at the base. It, the, those, those ideas don't gel. Now, Tim, I'm talking special relativity, and you know this paradox, the paradox of the bun and the pole, or here is as I put it. You have a tunnel in space, 100 meters long. You have a spacecraft, 100 meters long. And then the spacecraft moves close to the speed of light. It becomes contracted, right? So much so that the operator of the tunnel can close the two doors at the same time, such that the, the, the spacecraft in within them. Now you sit on the spacecraft and you say, I'm at, I'm at rest, and it's the tunnel which moves uh, relatively to me. And now it's it, the tunnel which contracts. The tunnel cannot close its two doors at the same time. You know this paradox, you probably teach it at class. Yes. And, and I explain and you, why it's not a paradox. And you, yeah, and, you, and then here is your solution. There is no absolute simultaneity. So one of them says, I close the two doors at the same time and open them. The other said, you lied to me. You close this one and open, and close this one and open. That means, Tim, that the two events coexist along time. The whole Lorentz contraction, oh yes, the whole Lorentz contraction is just by Minkowski's genius idea, treating time as a dimension. You wouldn't get the Lorentz contraction, you wouldn't get time dilation if you did not treat space and time as a four-dimensional unity. Now, to say that time is moving, let me be the devil's advocate, because this is what they say. If you say that there is a now that moves, moving means being in one place at one time, at another place at another time. What is the velocity of, of, of the now moving? This is why people say, don't say that time move, you are mixing categories. By the way, it was not only in the letter of condolence. 
first of all, never write such a letter of condolence to anybody whose dear one passed away. But Einstein said it to the philosopher Rudolf Carnap, and he said, we, uh, the fact that we have to give up the progression of the now is a matter of painful but inevitable resignation. Here is a talk between two philosophers. You can read his book, the volume, Einstein, Physicist, Philosopher. You will see in his uh, answer at the end against Popper that he said, yeah, I don't believe that there is such a thing as the motion of time. The problem, Tim, the discrepancy exists. The debate exists. Let's not ignore it. Yeah, I would have to emphasize that we're really debating two separate, though related, questions. On one hand, we have the physicist's attitude towards special relativity. This is well established. All the paradoxes were pretty much ironed out decades ago. And but as far as Einstein's special theory of relativity is, I teach that, and it's settled. It's a settled question. Like I said before, that's why we have hydrogen bombs. There's no debate about what happens when you pull the trigger on a nuclear weapon. Once again, uh... to continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.